This is the Seahawkers podcast quick reaction show for the Cowboys and the Seattle Seahawks. The Cowboys get the win 24-22. They score 14 points in the fourth quarter to get the victory. And uh, I'm joined by Clinton Botter and Adam Emmer. What's up, guys? What's up? Hey, uh, take it away, Adam. I, I feel like we need to give, give it to you. Let's, let's hand the ball to you. Well, I'm not going to speak in funeral tones, you know, <laughs> like both you guys. Like, uh, that's some, that some BS down towards the end. Like, I, so I, I've basically been up for like a million hours in a row, and like I'm punch drunk on Sudafed and beer, and I'm exhausted. But it's the end of the season, and so I figured I'd give you all five minutes. Here's the thing. This pissed me off. The end of this game just pissed me off. The first half, fine. Like, I get it. You're feeling each other out. Like, you're, you're trying to run the ball. You're trying to establish your identity. I understand. Like, you know, Clinton, you and I, maybe you and I, number one, were the two people who have been like, give Chris Carson the ball. Like, at all times. Said a lot, yeah. And by the beginning of the second half, I think both you and I could agree that Dallas Cowboys decided, no matter what, under any circumstance in the history of the world, we will not let Chris Carson run the ball. And you know what they did? They kept handing it off on first down again and again and again the entire second half until the end of the fourth quarter until it was too late and they didn't put the ball in Russell's hands because at that point you have the ability to run play action and take shots down the field and change the game. Yes, establish the running game until they try to take it away from you by selling out completely and then take advantage of that. And they were too slow to adjust. That was number one thing that pissed me off. Let's start with number one, because this I'm in absolute agreement with you on number one. This was, you know, oftentimes we assign blame to a game. And this was absolutely a Pete Carroll loss. The inability to adjust to that was Pete Carroll. And I see so many people pointing to, to Schottenheimer and the play calling. I do want to get your reaction a little bit uh, because, you know, you said how wrong you were about Schottenheimer this week. Uh, and, and maybe you called it a little bit too early, Adam. But when they get into those second and long, third and long situations, the, the blame of that going to Schottenheimer, when they've been doing that the entire season... That's not a Brian Schottenheimer thing. That's a Pete Carroll thing. That, that's what he wants them to do when they're in second and long and third and long. And you know how I know that is that's how they've been consistently operating throughout the entire season. So, no, you can't put that on Schottenheimer. I'm the last person that could uh, like come on now and be like, well, they, they didn't throw the ball enough because I've been, I've been harping all year to give just give the damn ball to Carson. The, the beauty of it was that for me, at one point, it was like when Russell pulled down a couple of those and kept it himself and scored that touchdown, it was all coming together. It's all setting up because they had to just pound the ball, running two yards with Carson, doing it, doing it, doing it. And then Russell pulls a couple back and gets that touchdown. But then they just extended again beyond that and just kept doing it after that. And it was just um, – it just slipped away. It just slipped away in the sense that defense played well enough and there was just – not nearly enough adjustment. It's the bottom, bottom line. So you guys said it all. So it's just, I feel like I'm the last person who can complain about this. I asked for it all year and I kind of got what I deserved to feel like. So, you know. Yeah, I have a hard time accepting your premise, Brandon, that this is a Pete Carroll thing, but maybe it is. We, we saw it all season, right? We, we saw them shut down on second and long and third yeah, and long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you've seen it all season, but it's been Schottenheimer calling the offense all season. It's one thing if you could point back after like 10 seasons – when, like, Schottenheimer wasn't there for, like, nine. We, we saw give-up plays under the Bevel offense, too. On, yeah, on third down, <laughs> not on second down. Uh, yeah. And, and it's less to give up plays. Even though that there's somebody in the Ring of Honor made a good point. They're like, why don't you just, like, at least give it a shot, yeah. chuck it up, maybe get a penalty in today's NFL? Yeah, that's what you do. My frustration, number one, was just the idea that on first down, you ran it into the line of scrimmage every single time, right. every single time up until like the last two, three possessions. And it was clear Dallas was like stacking the box and selling out on that on every first down. And again, I think that's a Coach Carroll adjustment where he says, OK, let's not do that on first down every time. You hire an offensive coordinator to, to run the offense. I feel like that's more of a shoddy problem. Because if you look back and you hear Rex Ryan talk about Schottenheimer, where he talked about, hey, I want you to run the ball more. And finally, Rex Ryan had to come to him and be like, hey, I appreciate you like doing exactly what I said. But now's the time you adjust. See, that's what Coach Carroll should have done. Well, it took Rex like six games to do that. <laughs> like, I mean, I, you, what? 
Carroll had a two quarters. And I think the big thing here too is like when, when we actually did throw the ball on first down, we had tremendous success, right? The, yes. the, the RPO to Dixon, and then that big play to lock it after that. And then, of course, the drive when it's too late, we're down 10. We're just throwing the ball everywhere. That's what compiles the frustratingness of it. It's just like we have a dude who is, you know, Russell Wilson is, you know, a top tier quarterback in this league, and he didn't feel like he was a big part of this game whatsoever. So even in games where Carson goes off and gets 20, 20 something touches, Russ still gets his chunk plays and gets enough of them and, and is still the dude and didn't feel like that whatsoever. It wasn't even like Russ was bad. It was like, where, where, where is he? Where's our quarterback? You know? Where's the opportunities? See, yeah, here's the thing. Exactly. The running game was extremely effective. We didn't put up the yards, but it was extremely effective in the sense that it made Dallas completely sell out yep. to stop the running game. And the passing game was there all game long. That's what's so damn frustrating. Russell Wilson, 18 of 27 on the day, 233 yards, a touchdown. They, they just, they didn't go to him enough. And yes, that's what Chris Carson, 13 rushes, 20 yards. And then I, you know, I'm curious what you thought about this too, because Rashad Penny comes in and they're like, okay, let's change it up a little bit. He breaks off the 28 yard run. He ends up with four rushes, 29 yards. Then he gets stuffed in the backfield for an eight-yard loss, which I think had more to do with blocking on the play than it was Penny. And then they absolutely went away from him after that. Then they went back to Carson. Wait a second. So let's talk about that for two seconds. Because the adjustment that they made going into the second half wasn't to throw the ball on the early downs. It was, maybe we should just put in the other running back. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just keep doing the same thing, just maybe with a different dude who's a little quicker. But he averaged more per carry than, than Carson did the oh, entire... What is that fish do? Like, that's not the point. <laughs> it's that they were selling out to stop the run, so you just run it with a different guy? That's not an adjustment. That's not a legit adjustment. Except on two of the runs, he had longer runs than Carson did all day. So I, if- they do that day! At the end of the day, you needed to put the ball in Russell's hands. Yeah. One one piece that was like strangely um, uh, abrasive for me was like I knew we had to go for you know go for our two point conversions. The two point conversions we blocked like Davis's two point conversion, then Carson's two point conversion. We blocked them brilliantly. And like, not not like they danced in, but if like, if those are first down runs, they're four or five, six yard runs. It was like, wait, where, where was that anywhere else? Cause like, it's, it's, you're on the two yard line. They know you're running the ball. We, we executed those successfully. So it was just more of that. Like we could execute. We just, we just didn't. And I got to say, Dallas, <laughs> they had to, they, they have a, their run defense is, it's legit. Two games in, in one year that they stymied us and we were the, the top running the team in the league. So. Credit to Dallas's defense. Now, Adam, you had you got to number one on your list, which was the play calling or the inability <laughs> to adjust to what the Cowboys were doing on defense, which was completely selling out on defense to stop Chris Carson. What's number two? Number two was is like once you finally get the pick by KJ Wright and you go down there on offense to go ahead and uh, you know take control of this game, the refs call a freaking holding call on Britt that there's that's not holding in any league ever. If you want to call that, then, like, let's stop playing football. And then the next play where they call the personal foul on Fluke, are you joking? He's running, looking one direction, and all of a sudden there's a dude in front of him. He bumps into him, and that's a personal foul? Yeah. (laughs) So that just implodes that drive. And then the subsequent Dallas drive, we have him stopped on third and five, and that pass interference call on K.J. Wright is absolutely (laughs) egregious. Egregious. Now, the following pass interference call on Coleman, it was legit. 100% pass interference. Yeah, It was almost like they got the memo after K.J. Wright got the pick. And, you know, he got there a little early. They could have called P.I. on that one, but it was bang, bang. It was, I'm like Mike Pereira. I would prefer that on the bang, bang plays that they don't call P.I., just like on the second K.J. one, like when it's that close. But it was almost like they had, it was like, okay, well, the Seahawks got that one gimme. Now it's, you know, now they're on lockdown. And yeah. they didn't get, it was all calls against Seattle from there on out. Yeah, it was pretty piss poor. And then my third point 
Troy Aikman should be banned from calling all Cowboys games. I'm yes. tired of it. I, I do like uh, Brandon. You, you know, you call him Troy the on point three. Troy Aikman, like just looking like a dis- disheveled, like bloody, bloody eyed mess. Like, like that he just. How does he not guy. know that it's that he knows when he has to be on TV? Uh, you and I, he instead he shaves like two or three days before the game. Doesn't even bother to comb his hair. Rubs yeah. sand in his eyes before he goes on TV, so they're all bloodshot. Come on, Troy. You know you're going to be on. TV. TV. Yeah, he hasn't like, heard of Visine. I, I feel like something exactly. I feel like something's going on in that in that man's world. And then whatever. I'm not going to speculate. But like, <laughs> as a millionaire who's got multiple rings on your in your hands, you need to look better when you're on TV, right? Yeah. Like, you think that's a cry for help? Is he going through a bad patch? Because I is, think and I feel bad now. I, but, like, that's what, listen, I think I think something's going on. Like, how how do you show up as a professional? Like with with that you know, that kind of bloodshot eyes? Unless you have like you know some sort of like legit like liver or kidney malfunction, which I feel bad for you. But besides that. He's, he's got to clean him, clean up a bit, but uh. Well, I was making fun of him. Now, I, now I just feel bad for him. I'm well, worried I'm about Troy. Do we need to have like a GoFundMe for Troy? You know what? Instead of worrying about Troy, how about we worry about Alan Hearns? Holy smokes, uh, that dude. Okay, disgusting. so I, I I missed it. I missed oh my it. gosh! I looked don't away ever, when they played the one replay, and I just ever, didn't see it. Don't ever watch it. It's bad. It's bad for you. It's bad for your daughter. It's bad for any anybody in the, in the lineage that will ever come to be. Don't watch it. Just avoid it. It's bad. Is it's bad. he like done forever? All you need to do is look at the photo of him flat on the oh. ground, and his his right foot is pointing toward the ground like it should, and his left foot is pointing straight up in the air. It's like a Gordon Hayward situation. It was nasty. It is pure disgusting nasty. My my daughter was next to me. She was like she like had a really guttural reaction like and went upstairs she was like okay i gotta go mm-hmm. like i don't blame you it was it was horrific i do want to go back to kj real quick because kj he he was like kind of the man of the match for seattle and i felt besides the interception even if that didn't happen dude was everywhere and that that uh yeah that pi is just so damn ticky tacky and so it's just like earlier in the game they let stuff go it's it's just like a baseball on both game. sides, and it was fine. That's what I'm saying. Like just be be consistent. That's that's all anybody wants is like be consistent. Call it the same way so everybody knows that's how you're calling it. Cool, but like you said, once Seattle kind of got close, they called it differently from there on out. And it was just it's just a shame because it's like in no way, shape, or form is that KJ one a PI. It's just it's just not. And we're what was that like six and a half minutes to go? So I mean, I don't think we played. We didn't play well enough to win. So you know that that is the that's that's what it is but man we're down three at that point getting the ball back with six and a half minutes left i I sure like our chance at that point and then they run basically a six minute four minute offense all the way down and uh you know and and then too little too late well and let's talk about that because in that moment they had third and 14 if they hold dallas to a field goal there instead dak runs it up the middle and you had two guys Bobby yes. Wagner and Bradley McDougal, who are two of the best tacklers on the team, converge on Dak Prescott and completely whiff. Yeah, well, yeah. it was third and long, Brandon. Like, I, I never feel – if it's over third and ten, I'm not feeling good. Never. Like, it, I'm just not. All they had to do, make that stop. Make that stop, and then you have a chance to, to drive down, score a touchdown, and clearly they couldn't kick extra points, and they could have been going for two for the win. The drop kick extra points still counts for one, right? I don't think they can trust him with how erratic it's been, especially on the kickoffs. I think that they were afraid that it was just going to be a little bit too erratic, even on the extra points. I guess. I don't know. I mean, I guess we don't see him in practice, so we don't really. Yeah. Well, what about the onside kick? Because to end the game, I mean, that wasn't even it wasn't even close. That was a pooch punt. Yeah, it was bad. Bad, bad news bears with that, man. That I don't know. Just, I, uh, I don't know if he mishit it. I don't know if they were trying to drive it farther down I the field. I don't care because with the way the rules are changed, like yeah. onside kicks are impossible yeah, not anyways. Happening. But I think Dixon could probably kick off a tee for an onside kick, too. That's what I don't understand is he can't kick a ball off the ground. Didn't he not play soccer? And even run. He should be able to kick off the ground. All, all the corrects. Yeah. You, you should be yeah. able to kick the ball while it's on the ground, while it's not bouncing. Versus <laughs> bouncing it off the like ground to kick it. Bouncing it off the ground like, and then I, like, like you're just like, showing off. I think to bounce it off the ground and kick it. Right. It's like that Tiger Woods commercial where he was doing the wedge bounces and like you know bounces it in the air and hits it before it hits the ground. Yeah. And it's like you know what he's even better at hitting it when it's on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Michael Dixon should be that way. I'm officially done with the drop kicks. It was Thank it was you. cool for a couple times, but now no. now it just feels like it's showing off. I was never well, in on the drop kicks. D- different question. Are, are we officially done with Seabass? 
I mean, like, yes. you know, just, right? Yes. This is exactly how it comes down to me on the Seabass thing. Remember when Hasselback, like, in the last year, ran in for a touchdown and, like, just clutched his back and fell to the ground? <laughs> yes. Like, when nobody <laughs> touched him? And among my group of friends, we started calling him Fragile Back because, like, he just, he just, he was just too old to even run for a touchdown untouched. He, he kicks a long field goal and, like, pulls wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Like, he, he attempts, he attempts a long field goal. Let's, let's be, you know, accurate with our, uh, he, he, he got it there. We well, got was it there. Right. But- it was way right, right. But yes, yeah. And he's he's grabbing the hammy like a I, sniper I, got him. He, that's what it looked like. Yeah, right? that's exactly. What he, I, well, at first, I thought he was just clutching his hamstring as a way to you know when a, a basketball player misses a shot and he kind of goes yep. down and comes up a little bit limp and you know is just to to show that he wasn't all there on the, yep. in that particular moment. Yeah, I thought that's what he was doing, but he was legitimately. No, we're hurt. gonna see. We're gonna see a film like a JFK film that comes out. There's gonna be a third gunman on a grassy knoll. <laughs> There's gonna a be a sea bass in the family. A magic loogie. There we go, man. That that's a that, yes, that's, that's a, a theory. Loogie. That, that yeah. is a theory. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I just I feel like for two years now we've we have sacrificed. Um, sea bass didn't hurt us the way Walsh did. We missed the playoffs because of Walsh. We didn't miss the playoffs because of sea bass, but I feel like we just did not. I don't know, down the stretch, kickoffs, not reaching the end zone, missed field goals, missed, missed extra points. I, I do feel like, man, we just need to solidify that and like not – like get somebody like maybe Gould that's out there, you know, get something like – No, no like, more old kickers. I mean, but how about, how about Vinatieri who's an old kicker who just does it, you know, just keeps doing it. So like, yeah, but he just keeps doing it shorter. Yeah, that's – you know you what? Know? It's, yeah. Like he wouldn't have ever attempted that Janikowski kick. Yeah, you know, can we we talk about that for a second? Actually, like, just again, the the unaggressiveness when we Lockett had a good return, a good return, had a great return there. It was at twenty six seconds left when we we kick it off. We get sixteen seconds, and we're basically at the forty eight yard line. And it was what two dump off passes, and then and then a good play by Mike Davis with that little three yard, four yard run to get that first down, just just to get the ball down and call timeout. But even there, man, even there, it's like. No shots, no shots at all, no balls, no shots to go 10, 15 yards downfield, find a pocket, let Baldwin get, you know, find some sort of a bit of a soft zone and just and get a little bit closer. I feel like even even there, it felt like we settled for a super duper long field goal with an old dude who has a busted hamstring when he tries to kick. Again, it was like, we're not pressing the ball forward when we had chances. It, it's a bit mind boggling. Well, even go back to when, the, when they got the ball on the 44-yard the line. You know, yeah. it looked like they were going to go nowhere. It takes them till fourth down to go deep to Baldwin with that incredible catch on the Ridiculous. sideline with the yeah. toe drag. I mean, it wasn't until that moment that it felt like they were even really taking a chance in the game. And that's what it took. It took that and, and they put it up 14, 10 at that point. And it looked like, OK, they've made the adjustment. They're going to be aggressive. They get the two point conversion with Davis. And, and, you know, here we go after Wilson runs it in. At that moment, it looked like they had flipped the switch, that they had made the adjustment where everybody was saying, yeah. And like Scott Romani in the, in the Ring of Honor said, you know, we know they're selling out to stop the run on first down and then they're going to blitz on third. You know what they're going to call, so exploit it. And at that moment, up 14 to 10, it looked like they'd figured it out. But then the defense, the, the defense in the fourth quarter to give up two touchdowns, you had that big catch uh, in zone coverage by Amari Cooper. Yeah. Dak almost gets in with his run and you, you had Zeke fi- finishing it off for for that score. So it just, yeah. they had the opportunities on defense in the fourth quarter and it just, they seemed to let up or they're, they're, they're tired. I don't know what was going on. I can't blame the defense in any way, shape or form at I'm all with you. in this game. Like, I mean, you look at that whole first half and whole third quarter, same kind of story. And finally, what my, my number one thing, and the one thing that I will give the coaching some credit for, is Kent Norton actually figured out at halftime, the only time Zeke gets, uh, gets his yards against us is when he bounces it outside. As long as we keep edge contained, Zeke didn't do jack against us. And the defense made that adjustment, and they made a conscious effort at keeping the edge against Zeke in the second half. And they gave the offense every single opportunity and then some to come through in this game. I will not lay one bit of blame at the doorstep of the defense on this game. Because you know, you put up three really good quarters and then part of the fourth quarter, and then hey, you wear down and they score some points in the fourth quarter. But back to your point too, it's like 
the only time we pressed is when we absolutely had to you know it's like okay it's fourth and six you must try this but even even some other ones that what was it third and third and whatever back on the when we had that drive that got backed up by the brit penalty and then backed up again by the fluker flag and then they run that second down swing like that was behind the line of scrimmage <laughs> almost to lock it i was like on second down and, so, and, and it's just super covered as soon as he gets the ball there's two dudes on him it's like what are we trying like why is that and it's like that's the play call because Lockett is the dude coming in motion going behind the seven yard back of the five five yard deep back and it's clearly like that's actually the first option in that play it's like it, it was just it was just very very frustrating that's like man can we exploit the middle of the field can we you can we go downfield in these guys once again it's just we only pressed it when we absolutely had to and then at the end of the game it just it that was that was it it was like poof it's gone it was not enough so yeah. okay well you guys you know my frustration toward the defense is minimal and i we're circling back to where the actual problem was but yeah. uh, i think too rather than you know the frustration on the defense i think you can say credit to dallas for beating the seahawks at our own game i mean hammering the yep. ball with zeke elliott you know, play in, play out. Yeah, okay. He doesn't get the 44 yard run where he busts it outside. Then he's held under 100 yards with, uh, if you throw that one out there. But still, they're hammering the football, time of possession, Prescott with the runs. That's what we were, what we've been used to seeing with Seattle. I think it's a fair point. I think they, they out Seattle, Seattle, right? You know, like in, in that way, they ran the ball better, they played better run defense, and Actually, they put the ball in Dak's hands more often in, in more opportunities than we did for Russ. This is what it felt like. He had 33 attempts, 22 completions, 226 yards. So their stat line, pretty similar with the passing game. Uh, Russell, three carries, 14 yards. Dak, six carries, 29 yards. Fairly comparable, but it's, and I guess with Russell too, I mean, a lot of those attempts probably coming, you know, when they're down 10 points in the fourth quarter. Yep. Well, the most frustrating thing about that, too, is, like, you look back, and did you ever feel like Russell was just, like, under duress, like, in a half a beat for the most part? Like, I mean, of course you're going to get a, a, a free blitzer here and there, right? But, like, He was on third down when, when they were blitzing right, dudes exactly, on third down. on third down. Because you ran the ball, ran the ball, and then threw it on third down in a predictable pattern over and over and over again so that the Dallas defenders could just pin their ears back. And just like Clinton said earlier, they only threw the ball when it was like, by law, you have to throw <laughs> the ball here. Then it's just it's, it's as predictable as the day is long. It felt like Russell had the time if you just gave it to him. If you just gave him the opportunities. It's like they just took his Catfish! chopped it off, and gave up a playoff game. Welcome to 2018 Seattle Seahawks. Well, it does feel like you know, a lot of people say, well, this was kind of bonus football after what we expected all season. And, and to go on the road for your first playoff game. I don't care. This was a game that you should have won. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. But it's, it's difficult. And just the way that they do play the first half. OK, let's throw that out. Like you said, going in at halftime, there was no real concern. I mean, they were down 10 six. But the defense had played well enough. You know, Dallas does get that late drive, but 10 6, it wasn't devastating. And yeah, the offense came out and, and they did get the lead. No, no, no. They came out, they came out on the first drive of the second half and went run, run, pass in obvious situations. Another three and, and out, three and yeah. Out. But that, that was, it was, it was later. It was in the third quarter. Yeah, I know. Way later that they finally started making some adjustments like that. That's yeah. what pissed me off. After, the, after they were, had a short field. After the punt, it was almost like they decided that they could not afford to to just go out on three straight plays on being on Dallas's side of the field. They had to make something happen. And that's why that pass to Doug Baldwin felt so good in the moment. After that, they still didn't adjust. They kept to the same stinking formula after going up 14-10 and... It does feel like Russell didn't have the opportunity to to do what he can do in the fourth quarter because of the plays that they were calling. At one point, I was thinking when we went up fourteen ten with the the fourth and sixth that Doug that was un- unbelievable and, and just beautiful. I thought at that point, I'm like, you know what? They're gonna they're gonna force them on this because we can't. They're not gonna kick a field goal. It was like pretty damn evident. Like doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what it is. Even when they could have kicked, they tried to, at one extra point to try to get it within three. They're like, nope, we're going for two. And, and at that point, I was like, man, they're just going to unleash this a bit because 
they can't settle for a field goal. Like they just cannot. So even though we were playing like so by the book, like, okay, logically we have to throw here. I was like, you know what? Janikowski being out is actually maybe a positive here because we'll, we'll have to throw the ball more, but we just have to because we need touchdowns. So it was, it was like all this just logic, like adding up to the side of like, we need to throw the ball more. And again, me, I, I can't be the dude who's like harping on this now because all year long I call for run the ball. But it was like all these things stacking up that goes, man, we, we got to throw the ball more. Before, we have to throw the ball more. Before you get too hard on yourself on that, Clinton, the whole idea is that you're talking about running the ball more all season, right? And handing it to Chris Carson all season in, in establishing that identity and in putting that in the books and putting that on tape so that everybody sees it, so everybody fears it, is right. for this moment. So when they do load up on it, when they do come down and bring that extra man in the box, when they do sell out on every single first down, that you go, oh, hey, sucker, you did mm-hmm. that now? Boom, Russell Wilson over the top. We've been waiting for that all year. And then they didn't do it. It is. It's situational. And that's why you know, you can't really say, you know, you got to throw the ball over all the time or you got to run the right. ball over time. It, it's a balance. You have to be able to adjust based on what the defense has given you and what it's not given you. And they, they didn't adjust no. in this game. No, they didn't. And so now we have an entire offseason. Talk about Russell and Sierra's relationship, <laughs> all the Seattle Children's Hospital trips, you know, maybe some more Richard Sherman quotes. This is going to be great. I'm really excited for it. <laughs> hey, we, we can play the, the Golden Girls any way you slice a game that came in the mail today. This is, uh, this is going to be my and offseason fun. You guys could play too. It's a gift that keeps on giving there, Brandon. You know, it's, it's uh, just. You know, I, I got things to do, but I appreciate <laughs> Collect the eight pieces of cheesecake <laughs> to win. That's, that's I, a, very. I don't know perfect. that anybody wins when they collect eight oh, pieces. Oh, everybody of wins. I do love that it's kind of like Trivial Pursuit that you got to collect pieces of pie, but it's cheesecake and that's the Golden Girls. And I can only imagine what the actual gameplay is, but it's. Uh, it's got to be good. It's riveting. I really do enjoy it. So. It sounds like a 15 pound <laughs> game to me. <laughs> You you gain fifteen pounds if you win the Golden Girls game. No, we we got it. We, <laughs> that's wonderful. I think oh, that's a, a good spot to wrap it up. It is. A, I didn't expect the season to end quite this early. I thought we'd at least get past one more week. You know, depending on the opponent. But now we get to root for whoever's playing the Rams. I'm gonna be super pissed if the Eagles win tomorrow. And then the next week, like if they win back to back weeks. No, no, no. Just if the Eagles win this week. Well, because that means if we would have won, we could have had the Rams. Yeah. And then that's disappointing. Yeah. It is. But but let's let, let's look at this. Everybody said we wouldn't even have been in this spot in the playoffs. And I'm not one of those that's been like, oh, this is all bonus football. I'm so super pissed we lost this game. But in the end of the day, like, this team's on the right trajectory. And I'm looking forward to what's next, man. You know, the, the reason why this was a little bit of a down year was because the defense was middle of the pack. And if you can count on anybody to coach up some of these young guys on defense, yeah, I'll take Coach Carroll and, and Ken Norton. 10 and 6, it was a down year. Is it Ken Norton Jr. or is it Ken Norton the second? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one with all the free time to figure those things out. Might have to check in with David Van Cleve Jr. to, to see what he says. He had a yeah. strong argument about that. He definitely did. He did. did I mean, oh, I missed this. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, is, is David Van Cleve also on furlough? No. And uh, <laughs> smashed it. <laughs> I think he just has the documentation to to prove that he is, in fact, uh, David Van Cleve the second and, and quite, not junior. Quite a bit. Quite so, a bit. Oh, yeah, wow. Quite a bit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. Okay. My do better kind of stuck my foot in my mouth uh, for one of our Ring of Honor members. So. Sun gun. I, I'm, I'm mad I missed this rebuttal. I, I got it. I'm gonna have to go find it. <laughs> and I, I'll say this too: like with Trey Flowers, rookie, that did, he had a he had a tremendous tremendous year. McDougal playing like you know stepping in for what they signed him for. You know, second year with Seattle, McDougal is a hell of a player. And the dude's like Puna Ford, like Puna Ford, man. He's jumping off. Like the first half, he was jumping off. So. Yeah, you know, I'm hopeful this is like kind of the 2012 moment where we can add some pieces, 
I'm hopeful that's where we're at. We could add some pieces and we come back and it's like, this is a ball and team next year. It's still going to suck tomorrow. And it's going to suck. when we're talking about, we're talking about CRO. I'm not watching ESPN all week. No highlights. No, no, I've no, had no, enough no with the, the cowboy love fest from Troy Aikman. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm going to be avoiding. I don't want to hear about all of your guys. It's like poor problems dealing with ESPN. I get to go into the sawmill tomorrow morning <laughs> at 5 a.m. and deal with the head saw filer. Who's a freaking Cowboys fan? Oh yeah, that's what I get to do. That's gross. You don't have to. <laughs> no, I have to. I have to, and I got to do it with a smile because I got to keep you know business relations up. Gross. I know. I, there's not very many of you, dude. I think you can be as big of a jerk as you want, and they'll just they'll need to keep calling you. I kind of feel that's accurate. It was like there's like three. You're like the last of like the, the silversmiths or something. There's like three of you in the world, you know. Yeah, so like, I'm I feel basically like, Daniel Day Lewis. I'm last <laughs> of the Mohicans. I feel like <laughs> you have more. I feel like you have more pull than you realize, you know. So just, just, just so, saying, so know? basically, I, what I'm hearing from you guys is I have full permission to kick him into the conveyor and watch him go away <laughs> to the chipper. Well, nothing to leave and not no, worry no, no. about it. <laughs> I am. You uh, told not, me that I get to murder and nobody should care. That's what I heard. Awesome. No, no murder. So death Clinton death. will no be taking death. over as the full time host <laughs> once Adam gets life. And I think with that, uh, there's only one thing left to say Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. You pounded a, a 16 pounder in Milwaukee's best there off camera. Is that what that was? That's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and ice, and ice, and ice. Milwaukee's nice. best. Listen, listen, yeah, it's 5.9, and it Let's, helps uh, suit the pain. Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs>